Okay, so the self-developing bank kind of came out of the fact that we did a little bit of math about the size and the um, weight of a 20 by 24 Afghan box camera, which was the original idea. But the thing would have had to be like six foot cubed and weighed hundreds of pounds, even even just to hold the developer. And we came up with sort of tray system sketches and then systems where big PVC pipes screwed into flanges um, under the camera that held chemistry. And, you know, we thought, okay, you know, these pipes are going to be huge and we're talking 70 to 150 pounds of chemistry. Um, so that wasn't going to work. Um, and then there were these cameras, kind of like Instamatic cameras, uh, maybe in the late 1800s, early 1900s, that came with powdered developer and fixer. And you would just, you know, take a one picture. They were one-shot camera. They came with a sheet of paper in it, and they were like a pinhole or a small lens camera. You take a picture and then just pour the, the chemistry right in, and you'd get one picture. Um, and sort of thinking about that, we thought about, okay, what if you know, we could take, in, instead of uh, putting all of the chemistry inside the camera, what if we could put the chemistry into the camera one by one? And so uh, that led to the Pinholio, which we did a video or two on way back in the day, which was just a little um, kind of test uh, proof of concept that was a little, you know, two and a quarter inch square about camera that um, the pinhole screwed onto the front or screwed off and you could put a um, light baffle in it and develop in there and that worked. And then, you know, we went to 8x10 and we had a working version a couple of years back, but um, it got pretty beat up um, and we needed to make more robust versions and then we tried a couple 4x5 versions that never really worked. And about three months ago, we started working on it in earnest and uh, since then we've gotten it to pretty... I don't know, um, you know, refined uh, stage now where they're working and clean and easy to produce-ish and, uh, yeah, reliable. Okay, put this in the rain hood for now. Cece, you're super pregnant. Uh, I don't see your stomach either. Okay, put your head closer to Ryan's. Ryan, don't move. Okay, Cece, lean towards me. Yeah. Starting now. Okay, don't move. No, my leg. Keep not moving. I'm gonna stop this down to 28. Close this up. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Don't move. Cece, open your eyes. Okay. You can move now, right? Yep, you can move. I'm gonna hold this just as wide as that to protect the back. All right. Here we go. And here we go. Ooh. All right, so first, with this film. This was something we learned uh, last week, right? This yeah. The only water you can get on a plant in New Mexico. Yes. So what is the final dilution roughly of this deck call? We're gonna go about one to three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, how much additional time do you need uh, from now? Give me four minutes. Four minutes from now. This is citric acid. What is the mixture you're using? 30 milligrams per milliliter? Per liter, yeah. Per liter? The thing is with one shot, when we're leaving it in long, you can actually go a higher concentration of citric acid, right? Because you're not going back and forth. It's not going to neutralize right, right. the bleach. So. And how many minutes do you want? Um, let's go for three minutes. Okay. And we'll open it up. So this is serving as a stop bath, and it's creating the ionic reaction on the metal silver that will 
react with the peroxide to do the bleach in. Yes, I think so. Which to me, it's all magic. It's all magic. So I'm gonna open it up. We'll see. Let's see if it uh, instantly fogs or not. Oh, nice. Okay, yeah, that's cool. nice. Perfect. Focus is pretty good on yeah, you. She's I mean, a little soft, but it was hard to focus. Yeah. I don't have a very dark focusing right. cloth, and also now, we've seen this effect uh, last time we did it outdoors. Is the the purple highlights? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also you need a moth in here to see it developing. It's important to have the moth. <laughs> Pick him out. I don't think he's gonna make it. Oh darn! It kind of burns on my finger, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So we didn't have the purple tint in indoors last week. Yeah, the purple it's, tint is it's like a, a it's UV thing. It's UV light on that motion. Or a light intensity yeah. thing. Maybe an intensity. This is one shot citric acid, so we don't really need to worry about saving it. Well, the best one outdoors, right? Outdoors. Yeah. I think there also might be a little fog line in this because I haven't changed oh, the back yet. Oh, but, okay. I uh, see it now. Yeah, there. Yeah. It's okay. All right, here's uh, another fun part. Not the funniest part, but this a reasonably is, fun part. This is the peroxide part. Forty V, twelve percent peroxide. Herb leach peroxide. That is pretty cool. Oh yeah, we're starting to get that purple mm -hmm. pink solarized image. That's right. Uh, it was two seconds at F28 about. Hmm. Under cloudy skies. Yeah, we were at F45 the other day when you and I tried this. All right, pulling off the peroxide. Now I'm going to use some sodium sulfite to make sure that it doesn't stain brown. Sodium Precise measurement. Sodium sulfite. Yes. So that should be uh, 30 milligrams a liter, but I just went over. You can't use too much. It's like you can't overfix, really, not at this time scale. So. Ooh, yes. Because the sodium sulfite is a basic solution, it's actually acting as a developer Maybe. a little bit. Huh? Yeah, or, you know, the can we're using The is, residual developer in the emulsion still, right? Yeah. It's absorbed in the emulsion. It's activating it with the basic pH. I guess this is as good as mine. Yeah, we've seen this this effect on the sodium sulfide that only happens out in daylight. Yeah. We didn't see this auto-developing indoors. And finally... Let's get some blacks in here. The deck tall. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so that's from old uh, hydrogen peroxide. But the staining is. Yeah. Nonetheless, I dig it. Yep. So, you know, what we've learned is one, much easier to work indoors when it's 90 degrees and humid. It's nice that it's humid in Albuquerque, but um, two, uh, fresh chemistry helps, but also you go through a lot of chemistry with a 20 by 24. <laughs> I'm down here at Q Lab in downtown Albuquerque with Ethan Moses, and we just finished putting together the second version of the 20 by 24 inch ultra large format camera. And we're gonna show it off tonight with the black and white reversal process uh, to some of the members of Q Lab. All right, great, come a little forward. Um, lean forward slowly. Okay, so. This looks good to me. You guys think? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's a good okay. head and shoulders composition. My favorite one is the one on the 
donuts so, <laughs> um, Joe, do you want to help operate this yes, I will. lens? Open? Close. Yeah. Yeah. We got it. Did not scratch the ceiling significantly. Yep. All right, and we're ready. <laughs> Pretty good. Ooh. That is nice. <laughs> Very sharp. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> I think this is a little bit bigger than your actual head. I think it is. Yeah. Cool. So this project has been really two different projects in one. First of all, it's been an ultra large format view camera, but secondly, it's the self developing back. Maybe a third project is the refinement of the direct positive black and white reversal process using peroxide and citric acid. So there's kind of like three projects in one here that we're working with, and that's what's made it so challenging. Yeah, I mean, I don't really think of myself necessarily as a photographer. Um, I kind of think of myself as an engineer, but I am not. I just play one on YouTube. Um, I love taking portraits. You know, I grew up in the Bronx. I thought of myself as like a mountain man. And, uh, you know, I was, um, you know, going to go live in the woods. But I kind of just walk around the Bronx with a machete and a boonie hat on when I was like 10 years old. And... Um, then one summer after my freshman year of high school, my family was going to go to the Grand Canyon and I broke my ankle. And uh, so we postponed the trip. And um, right before I broke my ankle, I spent my life savings on a Nikon N60 and uh, thought I was going to be like, you know, Ansel Adams and take uh, photos of the Grand Canyon because I would only be there once in my life. Anyway, you know, I've never been a good landscape photographer, um, but you know, over the years I became more interested in taking pictures of people. Um, you know, I'm not a professional portraitist, but uh, I love doing it. You know, I'm not really a studio photographer, but, um, you know, once in a while with big wacky processes, I really dig using uh, view cameras to shoot portraits. Yeah, so what I would like to do is take it on the road. Um, I think I'm going to, at the end of the summer, early fall, take it um, out to California and then up the West Coast uh, through Seattle, maybe Los Angeles, San Francisco, Oakland, uh, Portland and Seattle, and then loop back. And, um, you know, just like set it up for a day, kind of traveling uh, photographer style. And either, you know, I will shoot some portraits of folks that want to come see the camera and use it as a marketing opportunity to make sure they see, you know, smaller and easier to use products that I have to sell, scanners and things. But um, also, you know, if I can find some uh, fairly well-known photographers and people who are interested in using it, you know, I could just be a photo tech for a day and uh, sort of use it to enable other people to shoot the 20 by 24. Um, kind of like the 20 by 24 Polaroid was used back in the day, you know, uh, the Polaroid Corporation built it, they gave some to some photographers and studios, um, but really the way those studios would use them is, you know, somebody would come in and rent the camera for a day, and one to three people would actually run the process. And so I think, you know, I will certainly do like a bunch of sort of free days out there where photographers and friends can use it and um, maybe I will do some you know portraits for hire one after another uh, one day but I don't think that's going to become my business I'd much rather build cameras and sell them to people um, but also you know I could see you know some real professional portraitists like somebody shooting a Vogue cover or a Rolling Stone cover uh, you know I don't I don't want to get uh, too pretentious here but I could see like a professional just you know, renting the camera for a day, which would come with me to soup the film, but, um, you know, shoot, shoot some special pictures on it.